What up guys, KTOD Maddie here, hitting you with the long-awaited Command Iden update. You know, we've come a long way through testing and watching the meta develop. As I've said before, you know, control is one of those things you build for a specific meta, and I think we've done that. I think this is the best version we have, and I'm really excited to show it to you. Shout out to my boy, John Tata, TD Tata, on the Discord for taking down a 1K with this list. And shout out to our playtesting partner, Wu. He's been instrumental in playtesting all of our matchups, but specifically Aiden. Him and I are the Aiden boys. So I'll link his YouTube and give him a shout. If you haven't already, his stuff is really good. So I wanted to take a second to talk about why Aiden. Why is Aiden the best leader for this control strategy? And it really has to do with a few things. It has to do with her ability to continuously heal throughout the game prior to her deployment and after. If Aiden dies, you can still use her ability. One, one, chipping away one healing throughout the game at the end of the game against aggro is going to put them out of reach to finish you off and let you play your big units, play your finishers, and close them out. But also, that tick will negate a lot of upfront damage before she's even deployed. You, you can pretty much negate one attack, which goes a long way to stabilizing. Um, and then when she flips, there's two big things. One, pairing her with a barrage for a six point barrage and a six point swing can completely win back the board state. And then couple the barrage with the healing is, is a way bigger swing, I think, than a lot of the other leaders trying to employ this strategy. I know people are really hot on Krennic. I think that he has the spots. He lets you play things like Steadfast Battalion, which is a good card. But pound for pound, I would rather have the ability to heal prior to deployment and after with a much easier setup for brushing my leader and I, and I really find that that is the biggest way that I'm able to take back the game with Aiden. All right, so here it is. Here is the command Aiden update. As you know, I've been high on Aiden pretty much since I started playing the game for her ability to, to consistently heal throughout the game. She can flip, get a good burst of healing, coupling her with something like overwhelming barrage, and then shut the door on your opponent. Villainy command and villainy Vigilance have, in my opinion, the strongest control cards in the game. Overwhelming Barrage, Power of the Dark Side, Darth Vader. Couple that with Ramp and couple that with ECL. ECLing something like a Gideon Hask. This deck has the tools to fight aggro and to ramp over and fight mid-range. The real breakthrough, I think, happened when I started playing the card Vigilance off Aspect for 6 mana. I got a shout out to Ithiel, who started this uh, aggression event Iden control deck where you would basically mill someone with vigilance and after playing that deck for fun and, and i'll probably do some kind of content regarding it but after playing that deck i just i was really open to the idea of playing vigilance for six and so i brought it to the playtest team and we decided to slot it in the main deck at three just to see it and get exposure to the card and it has been unbelievable the amount of times the five healing, sometimes six, and I'll say why, sometimes the five healing plus removing a guy off the board against an aggro deck like Sabine completely takes over the game. Now you can either tap Aiden to get that six healing or she's already out there. So it's a huge swing in the aggro matchup. Let's take it to the mid range. There's a lot of times, say against Boba Fett, where your Darth Vader's are duking it out or you have to, you know, you have to swing into a Boba Unit Vigilance finishes those people off and then can either mill, heal, or potentially keep one of your guys alive with a shield. And as we know, shields are really good against things like Overwhelming Barrage, so let's not sleep on the shield. Another thing about that five healing is a fire spray hits you for five, right? So you're if you're able to negate one fire spray attack, that buys you time to deal with it, buys you time to to swing in and win yourself sometimes on those uh, those base races. So Vigilance to me has been the unsung hero of this deck, and I really think it's the glue that brings everything together. So some cards you'll notice from my previous deck list video that are gone. Um, Ruck, I threw him into the sideboard. I think he's really good when he's good, but when he's bad, he is, is bad. And so um, I'll talk a little bit more about the Ruck Gideon swap and how you navigate that. But that's uh, one cut. And then another one is Super Laser Blast. I just found it too slow. I think this strategy doesn't really need to employ an 8 eight cost uh board wipe i think you you have the tools to command the board without that so those are some big ones other than the vigilance for some of you that didn't see the first 
deck tech and you're new to this strategy, I'm just going to go over some some basic points. So why command? I think command is probably the strongest aspect, especially on villain in the game. Um, energy conversion lab, the ability to ambush someone out early, allows you to affect the board immediately. And usually you can affect the board by taking out a unit and setting up a trade where you leave your unit alive. So you've you've affected the board and you've dealt with with one of their threats. It's 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 a huge uh, tempo swing. It's a huge board state swing. Overwhelming barrage is is basically a bomb in of itself. You you're able to boost a unit, take out the enemy board, and then either use that unit to kill someone else that that the opponent plays in response, or um, start the race and put the pressure on them and start finishing the game early. Uh, using some of the the ramp and the extra ramp and super laser technician that is available to the command aspect you get to play things like darth vader earlier who come in and completely swing the board state in your control a cool thing about darth vader in this deck is one of the best things to pull is a death trooper that will allow darth vader to take out a seven health unit uh specifically you know your boba fett um who is one of the most prominent leaders in the game. So these are the main cards that'll that'll have you lean towards command. The big draw to Vigilance is its removal package. There's just such a wide range of removal that you have available to you. And it lets you build this toolboxy type scenario where you really get to, to tailor your removal package to what, what you are facing, what you're seeing in the meta. So uh, in my version, I have two Vanquish two takedown, three power of the dark side, and one make an opening. That is because I'm seeing a trend of more mid-range and control decks. Now, if your local meta has a lot of Sabines, you're gonna wanna probably cut down to one Vanquish and, and go ahead and add another make an opening. And so that's the beauty of control, and I say this a lot, is you really want to tailor it to what you're seeing in the meta. To build a control deck, you have to understand the meta and right now with the game being so new and the game being very localized you have to kind of pay attention to what people are playing locally and tailor your removal to that but that's a big draw for uh this the vigilant aspect is the removal package all right the newest add to the deck and probably the one i'm most excited about is vigilance itself paying six resources for this is completely reasonable because of the impact it has on the game in control matchups, you're using it to mill them. Now, you might not win by milling. A lot of times you won't because that's not the primary strategy, but you're playing an attrition war and you're trying to hit their impactful units so that way you have an advantage there because blue does not have an ability to make your opponent discard. So that's kind of your primary strategy here. Against against aggro, healing five and killing a unit is, an, is a huge swing and really can take the game back in your favor. There's a lot of times where I was finding I was getting burned out by Sabine and I, and I was really at a loss at, at how to put them, even with Iden was at a loss at how to kind of put yourself out of range other than a 30 point base, which I just don't think is the way uh, you want to play it in green right now because you really rely on ECL um, to get you through the early games. So the heat, the five healing from Vigilance, six if you have Iden out and kill a unit or, you know, you, you kill a unit and then tap her uh, is just is huge. That's going to be, you know, one one swing of a three cost with a fleet lieutenant is five. So you're negating that whole play from them. And then obviously um, four cause is four damage. So, you know, you're, you're just basically countering that play from them and it really adds up another thing not to sleep on is the shield token there's going to be times where you need to keep someone alive for a barrage and that shield token is going to let you do that uh, it's also good against emperor palpatine trying to block uh his ping so that way they can't easily steal a unit it's kind of a small interaction but it's one to to keep in mind so it wouldn't be control without some some finishers and uh these are your late game that you're really looking to close the game out with reinforcement walker in control mirror or mid-range matchup reinforcement walker is your top end that is going to either stabilize you or start accruing card advantage um, the cool thing about reinforcement walker is if you draw it later in a game even against aggro that becomes your win condition 
that three healing, and if you ever untap with it, will put you out of reach again. So against aggro, you know, I just talked about the card Vigilance. You're trying to use this cumulative effect between cards like Make an Opening, cards like Vigilance, Iden's ability into Reinforcement Walker to, to effectively make your life total go from, you know, 25 to 30, 35. And, and the card advantage in the mirror, if you're not able to untap with it, is significant. Avenger, not much to say here other than, I mean, obviously it's a very powerful card. You get into a slug fest, you're both low on hands, you drop an Avenger, and if they can't deal with it, they're pretty much stuck, right? So that card is is like an exclamation point at the end of the game. And now we have Darth Vader. Darth Vader is going to do a lot of work for you in the mid game, but if he's able to survive, is going to close things out at the end. He is your workhorse, but once he lives, a few attacks with him, and you know the game closes up pretty quick. So uh, these are the cards that you're really using to to put the exclamation point on the end of the sentence of the game. So I've talked. In this deck list are a little bit already about the aggro matchup, but these are your MVPs um, to the point where if I'm playing against Sabine and I'm on the draw, I'm almost always trying to mulligan for a Consortium Star Viper or Power of the Dark Side uh, just because of how important it is to set someone like Sabine back early. If they start with an A-Wing and you ECL in a Star Viper, you've saved yourself three, possibly more damage if they have a Fleet Commander, and then they then have to respond, you're able to take initiative and you can start negating some of the damage they dealt. Same thing with Power of the Dark Side. If you don't have the ability to play like a Viper Pitroid on, on the play against them, claiming and powering the Dark Side in their first play so they can't chain it into a Fleet Commander is a really good way to slow them down. Once you've slowed them down, you, you wanna use your spot removal and set up an overwhelming barrage to wipe the board and then you're going to follow up with vigilance to to close the door on them so that way they cannot use their reach use their burn to finish the game off so this is all pairing with Aiden's ability uh, her healing ability to and prevent them from just running over you so against mid-range control what i do with this deck is i mulligan for ramp i want to go and get ahead on resources so that way I can drop a Darth Vader, you know, as soon as possible or flip my um, Iden and play Barrage. The idea here is against Boba, you really don't want to set him up to use his own super laser tech on you. So you, you want to be mulligating, you want to be resupplying, and you want to use your own super laser tech um, more aggressively and not let him use his. Because if you get up on resources against Boba, you put them completely out of reach. I want to take a time to talk about the card Vigilance here. It is sneaky good against Boba. Not only does it, you know, the five healing can put you out of range of some of their reach with the fire spray. Also, there's a lot of times where their Darth Vader's are attacking into, you know, into yours or into your Iden, um, into your Gideon, right? And people are living with three HP. So being having another way to finish them off so that way you can drop your own units has been instrumental. Also, if you, you know, a fire spray attacks into your system patrol craft, you can finish it off with a vigilance. So it's actually, it's actually been uh, surprisingly good in the Boba matchup. I also want to highlight uh, Gideon, ECL and Gideon to finish off a Boba and get those experience tokens going uh, is another play that you should look for. And so you don't always want to use your ECL the first moment you can, right? Um, I think this is a time where resupply is more favored than super laser tech, so you can save that uh, ECL for Gideon to clean someone up and get the experience tokens working. All right, so this is the sideboard I'm working with, and as you can see, it's a little tuned for control matchups. Because we have the main deck Vigilance I and the main deck Star Viper, I feel like we're in a good spot against aggro decks like Sabine, so I really wanted to make sure that we are able to win the control mirror because i do see a you know a, i do see the meta leaning towards more control decks because of how good boba is um and we want to be prepared for that so relentless and devastator are going to come in for your star vipers against control you know ruck is going to be better than gideon there ruck is going to come in for gideon because 
of his ability to completely take over the ground. And then I have a little bit of sweet tech that I'm trying out, which is search your feelings and restock. The idea here being, you know, this is an attrition war late game. It's a slugfest. You're able to restock it some of your big units or maybe your vigilance is back into your deck and then search for them with search your feelings or just search for, you know, a card you need in a dire moment with search your feelings. And so you can either, you know, go for the extra mill against them or bring back, you know, a devastator that they were able to deal with uh, and get it and get ahead on card advantage there. And then your make an opening is going to come in against um, Sabine or it's going to come in against Boba. All right, guys, that was my command. I didn't deck tech. I'm re I feel really strongly about this strategy. I think it is prime to go ahead and win you a 1K. Again, shout out to Tata for taking down the 1K uh, this weekend. Really proud of you, man. Really glad that you put your faith in the KTOD. Uh, and love to see people who are part of our community, part of our Patreon, go out and get those wins. That's why we're here. To, to help you, you know, realize the, the goals that you have in this game. Uh, so hit me in the comments and let me know uh, what you think of the deck tech. If you play it, uh, please reach out. Let me know how it goes. I'd love to hear your innovations. And, um, you know, if you want more from us, uh, hit the like, you know, hit the bell. But also we have uh, our own Discord. Um, you can find the link to our Patreon in our YouTube community page on our page. Um, and uh, yeah, just go out there and get some wins.